Hey guys, my name is Semiak and welcome back to another episode of Woodville here in Sea Skylines. Where today, guys, we're going to be taking a look at the woodland industries and we're hopefully going to ramp up their production. Now, we checked them out last episode and it turns out the main big boy, Woodville Inc., is producing so many raw resources right now. We're not creating enough product, and that is where the real money lies within this place. But we gotta be a little bit careful because depending on where we place it, obviously it then pretty much depends on which is they're gonna be their closest exploitation route. And we know how much trouble that we've had in the past, so we need to be careful and uh, of how we kind of get things up and running. But um, I also want to talk to you guys about a potential transportation route. Now, before we jump into this, guys, if you do enjoy this, please smash that like button down below. If you are new and here, make sure you do subscribe so you are notified when the next episode does come out. But we are back, and before we jump straight into it, this is what I want to talk about. Now, we recently, well, I say, I say recently, a, few, a fair few episodes ago, we implemented this monorail route that tears all the way through back and forth well i've been kind of itching to get like a secondary one in right now and the great thing is they use the four lane road so that's the kind of you know the best way to kind of uh, implement the monorails in and we have a bunch of four lane roads so like if i take for example our brand new area of woodstock you got these two roads one going that way and then skedaddling across there and then one going down this way now if we just look at this one for example if the the route started say here It'll bend around, go all the way across, through here, transportation hub just there, straight over, where we then have another transportation area here as well. So it's all within walking distance, this road. Train station just there, and then all the way down to here, um, where they could potentially drop off people for workers. That could be a potential route. You know, if I kind of zoom out slightly from here, going all the way down to there. Uh, also, another one is if, say, like I started here, I could bring it wiggling it all the way through down here. If I keep following it, crossed over the roundabout through here, all the way up down the side, following this road all the way going up, and it could potentially cut back in and end there. It's a very long one. Don't get me wrong, it's a very long one. Or I could create a loop. So, scrap starting up here. Say it started here, for example. It'll go down here, then it'll do a turn to go down round here, like we've just seen, all the way up. And then I think at some point, it's going to have to kind of cut in. Which, if I could work some magic here, it can then go up to there, cut in, all the way down to back where it started. There are three possibilities that I want you guys to let me know what you think would work. Maybe none of them will work. Just let me know what you guys think about that idea in the comment section down below. Much would be appreciated right now. So, let's take a look at the Woodville Inc. So much tonnage that we are producing, but not enough tonnage on the paper and plain timber uh, on the outputs, which is really what I want to kind of look at and work with today. Now, I could implement more kind of buildings around here, but it would just cause more traffic to already what we have uh, traffic trying to lead into the exploitation area. But we uh, previously added in two new exploitation areas up here into the mountain side of things. So I'm thinking if I incorporated these processing buildings around this area, then their, their go-to is to go to these exploitation zones right now. Thus, not throwing too much traffic over there. Fingers crossed. That's what I'm thinking anyway, but you know, this is City Skylines. It, it never works out the way you really want it to, does it? It, it never does. It never does. So we're going to take a look at this then and get a few of these uh, new buildings in. So, oh, we've got some um, events today. We've got the football stadium and we've got a big one at the Expo Center. Ooh, that's a long time. So let's go for the ones that produce the most amount of stuff. we got the one up, the port mill does the paper and then this one does the planed timber. So these are the big boys right now. Uh, this is quite a fairly big building. You know what? They're, they're both kind of fairly big buildings, to be honest with you. So we're going to squeeze in some dotted around and integrated within this area to begin with. Because it's quite a low traffic area anyway. Not enough uh, buyers for the products because, you know, we need to kind of turn it into the good stuff. So let's just go with the... Is this the pulp mill first? Yeah. I'm gonna, one, two pulp mills just there. So they'll eventually get the raw resources that they require and need. Uh, I'm going to then do another pulp mill just there. 
So I slowly started dotting these around. I kind of need to see where I'm able to place them in. Now the other one, what's that one called again? The engineer wood plant is a smaller, slightly smaller building which I can use to integrate in all the little nooks and crannies. Which would be a big help for us there. So that's a bunch of those buildings just thrown in. And I feel like that's going to be quite enough for this area. So we're just going to give it time. And I think what I'll do as well, we're going to upgrade the roads, the dirt roads around here. To my little side street style. Just basically all the roads leading to these uh, new factories and stuff like that. Just so they have a little bit of a higher speed limit. And they can get to where they need to get to. Then all the other roads can remain dirt style. There we go. Like I said, if I only do it like to roads leading to the factories, it's like that's as far as the funding went. <laughs> to the factories and nothing beyond. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. So do this road as well. Because I feel like we're going to drop some just here too. So we'll go back to the. Uh, ooh. Okay, so a port mill just there. Oh, I've got to remember, yeah, as well, the, um, the fact that we have the incline. On the, uh, on the old mountain side of things. So things are coming down quite dramatically. You've got to be a little bit careful on that front. But it all should have water anyway. And all the power is all connected. So we're all good. We're all good on this side. So I think that's quite a hefty amount within this area. And hopefully it sucks up a lot of the raw resource around here. It takes a lot from the, uh, the storage areas and all that kind of good stuff. And hopefully it favours these. I mean it could still potentially go down to here. Because we have like big jams right now, which again, I, need, I really need to sort this junction out. I really, really need to do that. But then we have stuff like where we cross the, the little river here, where the only little section is this. Which I've got all this kind of area and land here to kind of work with. It is slowly inclining, so you got to kind of be careful. I don't know whether it's going to be easier to build stuff sideways or horizontal. So that will be very interesting. So let me get the industrial road. And we'll figure this out. So let's say this kind of continued to go straight. And let's say from this point there, I created a road going that way. Just so we've got two variations in directions. Now is Oh, hold on. We are not even in the zoned area. Your boy's not even in the zoned area right now. Woodville Inc. is about to get an expansion. Claim. Claiming this little section here. In between all the rivers. They got a new claim. Painting, do 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 do. There we go. Nice. Uh, right. Sweet, mate. So yeah, is it easy to go sideways or this way? Uh, I suppose it's kind of easy. You can pretty much go both ways, really, couldn't you? So keeping the road off this junction here. The I mean the traffic off this junction here. Sorry. And we'll bring this down by forty. I'll then bring this down by forty. Go out by another ten. Bring that down by 40 just there. And then what we'll do is we'll create a 10 there. Create a 10 there. And a 10. Well, it's 11 really on them ones. And then a 10 there. Just so I can divide the building slightly. And I should then be able to squeeze two port mills there. Port mill there, port mill there. One there. Ooh, slope too steep. One there, and a little bit too steep there. Nice. So then little areas we've got around it, we're not like, we, we kind of like, you know, dispersing the traffic a little bit more evenly. But at the same time, we're going to throw then the smaller ones on. There we go. There. And there. So there's a lot of factories being thrown down there right now. So this is going to be quite become quite the high traffic area but it should be okay it should be okay uh, power wise bring this directly over got to be careful on the old elevation changes but again that should be all good and just by implementing them as it is is gonna you know really up our production you start to see a lot more trucks and vehicles now driving around these areas which uh, I won't change any of the road kind of structure yet until we've kind of got it all in and then we can really see, you know, where the demand is. Because there's no point me me doing anything until stuff happens. Because, again, I don't really, or I don't ultimately know what, what's meant to be happening. 
Now, eventually, maybe I might bend this road all the way around and kind of create a little connection over there just to ease the uh, the flow of traffic into this area rather than going all the way around the Recon. So if I bring that down to there to connect, nice. And I do the same to this side here. So we've gone very gritty out here, but this is a brand new claim of land. And they will do what they want to do with it. So bring down to there. And I think this one here, I'll connect down to that road. Just so I can keep some areas kind of free. So if I come out by 12, come out by 12, and then we can drop now some more fire pulp mill bombs down. Kaboom, 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 kaboom. <laughs> Kabooms for days, he says. Right, so a lot of stuff being thrown down right now. Vehicles are all, trucks are already delivering the goods over here, so we can start producing everything. And again, you would think that they're going to favor this this over everything else and i know it's com it's not even connected to the same network it kind of only goes that way out this one's an inlet route so we could drop off goods via train that's always a possibility but if those are get take it anywhere else can't do it so it'll be interesting to see how it works it, it really will be interesting to see how that kind of works at this point uh, and then we've got this one over here, which I can implement more stuff around here. There's a small little village too, but I want to see how that progresses to begin with. So, what of a link? We've upped our um, tonnage right now, but it's still not a lot. It's not a huge amount, but just shows you that we need to create so much freaking more. Holy moly, we need to create so much more. So I'm going to come up this road here. Why can't oh, I'm about to say that? Why can't I go up? How dare you? How freaking dare you right now? So more, I'm going crazy on the pulp mills. But I just want to utilize these as they're the largest buildings. And then we'll squeeze a little one of these in. Voila. There we go. Lots more in. And I'm trying to like, you know separate the traffic to where it's coming from and going to as well now we'll try and get in some of the other ones that's here then so if i bring this down by i'm gonna go by 11 give us a little bit more spacing there we go and then go a little bit more crazy on the standard um wood what are they call again wood mills no wood plants that's it but everything's on the inside right now There we go. So it's like the traffic for this area comes in this side. The traffic for that area comes in this side. The traffic for here can go both sides. So we're dispersing it nice and evenly. But again, this road might become overly populated. So we kind of got to keep an eye on it. You can already see right now how this little section is looking. So what I could do is I could implement our little four lane singular roads. up to there and then bring it down to there just so we like they've always got like a dedicated turning lane and can go straight on and stuff like that there we go so without doing anything can just upgrading the capacity of that road will kind of ease things slightly and they're all turning here from this right hand lane to kind of go into the left hand lane we're gonna stop them from doing that now with the lane connectors so bam that way you go that way and then that that is pretty much it so if you wanted to go left you'll take a different route again to ease the amount of traffic coming into this area so there we go it should ease the flow a bit more but we're gonna have a more than usual demand at the minute because all of a sudden it's like when you drop a storage building down everyone wants to go fill that storage building so it's like i've dropped all these down together then all of a sudden they all need to be having raw resources all together. So give it some time. Give it some time. So those a few, couple of more additional buildings right now. We've got up to 200 tonnage on the plain timber, which is understandable with the amount of buildings I've just thrown in. Uh, paper is only 82 tons, which is surprising considering how many pulp mills I just got in. 
I feel like I got way more pork mills. Or is it just because they're they're bigger buildings? It kind of feels like or seems like it's a whole lot more. Maybe, could be, who knows. But what I've noticed is the raw resources is slowly coming down. We're starting to import a little bit more. But more importantly, the total profit is sky high. But the only downside is, look at my workers. 7,800 potential workers I could have here. I've only got 3,600. We need a lot more residents moving into uh, Woodville right now. And we also need to have the ability to get them... Um, to work a whole lot easier too now do we have any transportation uh oh see right what i could do what i could do right now let me know what you guys think about this because it is kind of a little bit weird to have like the metro line extended up into the forest that's a really weird thing for it to do but the fact that i have this line end here and this line end here they could both kind of come into one and have the two lines then run up passing through to get people to work a whole lot easier so those jobs are kind of more approachable in many ways should i do that let me know in the comment section guys if i should kind of implement the metro line and extend it all the way in that would be interesting that would be uh very very interesting to say the least now lots of vehicles using this which is why i kind of suggested maybe having the road kind of bend all the way down to hook up to the highway so at least you could skedaddle a few peeps out of here. Maybe creating some bypass roads would be a good idea too. It's just the sheer amount of vehicles that we do have on these roads. Uh, it is what it is at this point. But um, that's full of wood and it's exporting the forest products. That is going to the medium warehouse. So it's all taking stuff down to here. I mean, one thing I could do is move the warehouses to say, dot them around a bit more evenly. So everyone's not trying to drive down to this area. But it comes in waves. I've just placed a ton of buildings down. We just kind of got to let the dust settle in many ways and see what happens. So the tonnage for the uh, paper right now has gone from 82 to 144,000. Nearly making 50,000 on the weekly profit right there, which is really good. So this has kind of been a success. I spent a lot of money, so I need to see my investment come back in. <laughs> I really do. But let's take a look at, um, oh, that's a good point. The unemployment right now. So unemployment is 2%. There's plenty of jobs available. I just need more workers coming in. And the small amount of zoning that I do have just there, um, I need to bring more people in. So maybe I should look at potentially getting some high density down. So I could squeeze some high density just there in this little section. Uh, anywhere else I could squeeze some high density, like utilizing the front of all this again. High density. Any other little spots that I could throw it in, which would be kind of handy for us. Like, I don't want to go too crazy. Maybe just around here, high density on the road. Because high density brings a lot of people in and living in these little areas, so... It would be a good idea. And we do need to up our population to get more workers living in Woodville to work in the Woodville Inc. area. It's just a shame that, you know, as good... I mean, I love the real-time mod in this series. It's amazing. But as good as it is, the only downside is they only build houses one by one in work hours. And it's kind of annoying if you want to go on a rapid expansion. Because it ain't happening. I mean, I can put it on times nine. And you're building this house so freaking slow. Hurry up, you fool. Hurry. Your boy needs workers. Uh, we've got 89,000 um, in our population right now. I don't think with what we've done right now, we'll have enough workers until we have like 100,000 population. That is what I'm thinking right now. But uh, trucks are moving. There's no jams. I mean, there's a little bit of a backlog here, but there's no jams in particular. What I could do here to kind of ease the flow of the traffic is have them all switch over to the right-hand lane. Just so these traffic, these vehicles can come out too, which I just realized they should be also turning into the left-hand lane. Now, it's going to move more vehicles down to here. That's fine, but it just kind of um, eases the flow a bit just there. Then down here, right, what's the gradient like? What are we saying? We drop a little roundabout there. But then again, look at it down here. They all seem to want to go. Actually, I don't know where they want to go. Exporting. Where's the route Yeah, they're going to? They want to go to here. I don't know why. But maybe I should think about, at this point, 
changing the this because this is what kind of slows us down from this side so i think now it only makes sense if i make this not just an inlet a normal one so they can also go out that way because there may be the reason that they're choosing to go down to here because it's the closest station that's on this train network that could potentially go to the uh oh i need water over here uh, potentially go to the the cargo airport the cargo hubs over here it needs to get to this kind of area so i need water oh damn i need water well, i'm gonna drop these just here real quick just for the sake of it right now that's a headache for another day but they should all yep yeah, they've all got the water so by me then implementing and having the ability to go that way it also throws them onto this line which you can come down here and go that way and that way whatever they want to do uh, but that's kind of important for us now another thing is this line comes all the way through down to there and then goes in that direction and then that direction so they they, they could get there they got to wiggle around everywhere but it is it is a possibility that they could go in that direction which might make these a little bit more interesting these exploitation areas only time will tell but i ain't solving the traffic anyway because I, I could be jumping the gun again like i normally do i see a little bit of traffic and i panic but then i just realize maybe it's because the time of day it's probably because i just implemented all those buildings in but what i do know is here not looking too great not looking too great here so maybe this little junction here because this is like our main road passing through this could really do with a roundabout but then even if i did get all the vehicles over it this is going to slow us down hmm Right, if I did this, the old the old Sediac style roundabout, three lanes of, of hell, bam, there we go. <laughs> Can we class this now as, as, as Sediac roundabout? I think I'm going to copyright this roundabout. Sorry, guys. Right, giveaway coming in. So it should hopefully keep the roundabout a moving. And what do we have going on over here then? So we, we need to get more vehicles in this area passing through is what we need to do. So if I upgrade that to be in the four laner, if I upgrade, apparently it's too steep, uh, not on my watch. There we go. All four lane is there, so we got also some dedicated turning lanes for some of the uh, the directions that they want to go in, and hopefully it should push uh, the traffic through a whole lot more. So I'm just going to sort out some of the lane connectors right now, just in some of these little areas. So if you're in this this lane here, you're turning that way, and this is the straight on route. This one, you're going that way, or you're going this way, just so they don't trip over on the junction. Keep the junction a moving right now. That is the turn there. That is to either go straight on or turn. You guys are either going straight on or you're turning in that lane. Again, stopping them tripping over on the junction. Hopefully that means the vehicles will keep moving. It does mean to push the traffic to a different junction. It does mean that, but hopefully we're, we're pushing stuff through very slowly. But with the implementation of now the other two cargo uh, terminals that they can now go on, on that uh, we change the roots of that hope which they're now utilizing very well already utilizing it very well it might make these a little bit more enticing to use over this one and i think that is the case because all of a sudden this road is now freaking quiet that road is now dead <laughs> Oh, no. No, sorry, sorry. It's this road. <laughs> I get confused. I thought it was this road for a second. It's this road. It's still kind of busy, but when they turn right to go down here, there's a tail end happening here, and that's getting closer and closer. So I think once this traffic has passed through, and again, this is where old Seniac, I'm calling him old Seniac right now. Old Seniac would have gone, oh, my God, panic, 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 fix it. But then new Seniac has realized, don't jump the gun. This traffic will eventually pass, and then your issue will be gone. Just give it time. You're using the real-time mod. But then again, i got all this backlog over here, so it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, it should make this a little bit more enticing. Fingers crossed. 
Fingers crossed, he says. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, we'll just kind of see what happens and what comes of it. Hmm. Interesting. So really, this little station here can only go down in this way, cut through, and maybe pop up here. Use the excitation area there, but it can also pass through, come down to here and go in that direction. So there really is no benefit in using that one. For example, say over like that one. It's just a sheer amount of vehicles we've got using it. It's crazy. And it's a shame nobody wants to use this one as much. I don't know what it is about that one. So do we do we know where they're going? Um, junctions? No. Trucks? No? We know nothing? Fools. Now, I know dropping this little roundabout here has caused then some traffic issues with everyone now having to back up themselves. But that tail end is, is moving down slowly. And I'm noticing a lot more vehicles now making that left-hand turn. So where are they snaking down to? It's a little bit of everywhere, really, isn't it? It is a little bit of everywhere. It really is. So... They're utilizing this really well. A lot of trains are leaving. Not so much utilization on this road just yet. Uh, this train stop just yet. Um, would it be a good idea to have potentially a station up here just to take some of the edge off some of this area? I don't know whether I'll be then focusing too much over here. Or whether or not I just wait for this to kind of pass through. Hmm. We've got to do something anyway, because the sheer amount of uh, trains coming through this area is, is, is terrifying in many ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up. I'm trying to utilize this one a little bit better. Rather than bring that up to here, I'm going to have that come over and then connect to this section here on the bypass of the station itself. Just so I can maybe utilize that a station that I already have in place a little bit more. So, start that there. 21. Bring it up. I'm going to anarchy it in. Boom. So, it's already on the bypass. So, it shouldn't trip up any other traffic. Hopefully. Pause it a second. Delete this. And then raise it up by 10 and then I want it to go pretty much in that direction so 13 by 13 we're going straight across boys straight across still elevated straight across and then we'll bring it back down to earth Eighteen by eighteen. There we go. So let me just sort out the power line. I've just snapped. There we go. And that's now hugged up in a more closer direct route, which should hopefully be pretty handy. It goes in multiple directions, which I'm then hoping that becomes a little bit more enticing for maybe some vehicles around here. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> who knows? Well, we, we can only find out. We'll only find out. And, ooh. Ooh. Why do you not have water? That is a good... Has our water availability gone down again? Holy smokes. Right, where can I drop some of these? Is the question. Um, right, one, two, I swear I won't just place some of these water stuff down. Has everyone all of a sudden decided to flush the toilet? Oh, it's because this has no power. Oh, I realise. Oh, I'm so dumb. Right, 
connect that to there. I'm going to throw a couple of extra. All right, there we go. Okay, now we got water. I forgot it needs power. I'm so foolish. So, so foolish right now. Anyway, we should be good. So, a couple of more trucks driving down. Again, I don't know how beneficial that's going to be. It might take some time for them to realize they can utilize that. We'll see how it goes. But that tail end is, again, it's slowly moving. It's slowly getting there. And then once it's kind of cleared on the roundabout, then, you know, fingers crossed we're pushing in the right direction. But I just want to see if they're going to utilize this one a little bit more. I'm, 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 like I said, I'm seeing vehicles tooting down right now. But I don't know how much they're going to utilize it. I'm not sure. But anyway, we do need to think about this. Um, this area. Now, we have it set up. And it looks like they're all trying to make that right-hand turn. And I, I wouldn't normally do this. But in real life, you get this kind of stuff happens. You have, like, especially in the UK, you have roads that bypass the whole roundabout. You know, like that. You actually have these type of roads in the UK. They they kind of completely bypass the whole roundabout, so you can skip uh, the majority of the traffic. Now, I'm going to have to get rid of traffic lights there. None there. Sort out the lane management's real quick. So that goes to there. Um, you go that way. That way. And I want to see if I can do some symmetrical roads as well, to kind of because obviously I, I've chomped off a big piece of the pie right now. So, not that type of road. I need, first I need this asymmetrical road here. Right, hold on. Pause. Do we have a three and a two is the question. A three and a two? Yeah. Right, let me just sort out this lane management real quick, guys. So that will go to there, to there. So that eases the traffic flow. That's going straight on, straight on. Now it's hitting the roundabout. And we shouldn't have any traffic lights. And junction restrictions allow everybody to freely flow over. Just in case there is any issues. And yeah, it's all good. It's all good in the roundabout. So we actually have those in the UK. And I actually kind of live quite near um, a roundabout that actually does that in real life. So it's kind of like when that is a more direct route they allow you to kind of um, bypass it without going onto the roundabout you can still make that turn by going onto the roundabout but they kind of give you uh, the ability to kind of um, shoot past it to keep the traffic flowing is what they do and it's definitely something that we should have implemented just there but then we have this traffic further down the road where people are not really sure what lanes they kind of need to be in. And I don't know whether it's, this is just the initial, oh my God, where are we meant to be going traffic as everyone kind of sorts out their lanes. But they're pretty much trying to go straight ahead. Now, if they're all trying to make that same turn or same lane dictation, then I need them to sort out the lane management a whole lot earlier. So throw all that into there just to kind of get them pumping through. And while that is a nice little sweet bypass, they're instantly stuck in the one lane. So let's sort this out then. So I'll allow them to pass over each one there as they get a little bit closer. So that ends a cross over there, cross over there. But I also need to do the same coming back the opposite way. So if I if I fixated all these into the same lanes, just just give me a moment. All right, and then what I can do here is these guys can crisscross just there. 
And I just need at least one. That goes that way. Now, I know this is against everything that I should be doing. I get this. You don't need to shout at me in the comment section, Seniac. What are you doing, you damn fool? You're breaking all the rules. This is not how it should go down. But this is how it works. If you're in the right-hand lane, you've got options to get into the two left-hand lanes here and then here. And if you're in these two lanes, you can already crisscross on this section here. So you, the only thing you can't do right now is get into the far right lane. But that happens when you get to there. Obviously, because these guys in, in the purple lane would have already crisscrossed at this stage over here. So that should hopefully hopefully alleviate some of the traffic. It's kind of redirected a lot of the traffic right now. Because the way we've kind of um, set it all up. But that gives us the option. It does give us the option. And because of what I've done, it's kind of messed up everything. <laughs> and uh, so, again, give it some time. So that truck's now tooting down. Which, which direction is that going to go in? So that's coming down here. Would it choose to switch over at this side? It does. Does it switch again? No, because that vehicle is deciding to go to the left. Nice. And there we go. Now that I've updated all those routes, then vehicles can pass through. So wait, mate. So we, mate. So that's all good then. Oh, I, I just realized that. It only happens here. I need that hat to happen a whole lot sooner. Where they're able to switch into that lane. So we can decipher the traffic a whole lot earlier. Get them to pass through. Now, by increasing the flow of the traffic, it does mean I can then bring more vehicles to the junction. Which could potentially be a big issue for us. But they're slowly going around, slowly rocking and rolling. And hopefully we'll get to that point. But I know, I know that is completely wrong and I shouldn't be doing that. I get it. I get it, but it is what it is at this point. It is what it is. <laughs> Don't expect me to be a freaking genius. I ain't. Uh, right. Not using that as much as I hope they would. Which is a shame. So where is that train actually heading? It's, it's, it's exiting the region. And where is this train heading? To the cargo hub over here. Okay. Okay. So if that is the favorite excitation route right now, what's stopping me from making a little one-way route going this way? To maybe get more trains to utilize that. Oh, I've I've already messed it up by selecting what I've selected. <laughs> right, that should have been elevated. There we go. I just want to see if I do that on that one side, because it means it can then bring traffic from this train station here, and then cut down to the air to use the same route. Maybe take the edge off this exploitation area as well. So I'm just kind of doing little tweaks here and there is what I'm pretty much uh, kind of implementing. I've cleared all the traffic on this road. So now that's gone, the traffic on this side of the road is now clearing through. Because what it does is, by taking that route there, it's less vehicles on here. Thus adding to the mix. But I could also utilize with some flyover routes as well, like what we've done... Um, over here and I for the life of me. I don't know why they always choose to slow down here. Oh Is it because of that? Wow All that time and I, I forgot to select one option, but yes, you like we get the flyover route there We need something here too, but it's always it's always learning about What's the uh, The route they're taking the most so, if I was to... How do I do it again right now? See the, the traffic routes. Um, I always forget which one it is. Is it this one? Escape routes? No. Traffic? No. That's not what I want. I always forget which one it is. It's this one, isn't it? Traffic routes, yeah. Um, so, okay... It's a little bit of everything, isn't it? It is a little bit of everything. 
But then at the same time, the traffic's gone. So, like, what am I worried about? This is, this is, see what I mean? As much as I try to be a better person, old Seniac comes back in and panics when he sees traffic. When what I really should be doing is just letting the backlog clear. Ah, <sighs> damn it, Seniac. I mean, it's not at a standstill. They're just wait. They're just biding their time and waiting. Is what they're doing. They're just waiting for their time, their moment. Damn it, Seniac! You're so foolish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so foolish but yeah it's all slowly starting to move it is all slowly starting to move we're slowly getting there we're slowly rocking and rolling just took a bit of time and we managed to pass 90,000 residents as well which is a good sign so did my little big skyscrapers all start to fit in uh, slowly did by the looks of it. Uh, residential over areas over here slowly being built too, which is a good sign. So we can think about adding more in. There's still a few little gaps here and there, but we can definitely think about adding in more in very soon. But it is like midnight right now, so no new buildings are going to be built. That's the downside right there. Uh, Woodville Inc. 69, nearly 70,000 on the old exports. Damn! And we managed to gain... Oh, well, we managed to actually gain uh, 1,500 additional workers. So that's good. That's real good right now. I'm very, very impressed. And I think that's where we're going to end it for today. Hope you guys did enjoy this episode. If you did, smash that like button down below. And until next time, I'll see you all soon. So good. Good.